Hey everyone, it's Mike on Chess and we've got a nice game between Alpha Zero and Stockfish 8 today. Uh, this game was played in 2018, Alpha Zero was playing white, Stockfish was playing black. So Alpha Zero kicks off with Knight to F3 and their standard opening where they play D4, E6, C4 and we get B6 from Stockfish. And Alpha Zero is quite flexible to play G3, Bishop E7 and they have this Bishop G2 idea. So usually Alpha Zero always plays this type of system with Knight to F3, Bishop G2, and D4 and C4. And Stockfish here just castles kingside. Um, and straight away Alpha Zero gets on the offensive. They play Knight to E5. Already this Bishop is loaded up to attack this Rook on A8. And Stockfish has nothing else better to do than play C6. You can't block with the Knight because it will get taken twice. So C6 is pretty much the only move here. And Alpha Zero develops with Knight to C3. And I was thinking maybe they're playing here for D5. And this would really suffocate Black's position. With also the threat of D6 coming up in the next move. Bishop B7 by Stockfish. So this does actually support D5. And I think if we play D5 as white now, I think it's too early. C takes D5, C takes D5, and Bishop B4. So this Knight is now pinned. It can't protect D5 anymore. So even if white castles here to get off the pin, black can just take this knight off. After white recaptures the bishop, black can just take on d5. And after bishop takes, knight takes d5 and c4. Black just emerges a whole pawn up. And it turns out this d5 move was just too premature. So in the game, instead of playing d5, alpha zero opted for e4 here. So it still supports um, d5 and just grabs some more space in the center against stockfish. So after this e4 move, Stockfish now played bishop to a6. This is a very unusual move because they've just developed it to b7 and now they're moving it again. So this wastes a lot of time. But basically the idea for black is to play d6 and attack this knight which is protecting the c4 pawn. But alpha zero does the standard thing of just playing b3, supporting their pawn. And after d6, they just drop the knight back to d3. After the knight retreats back, Stockfish is the one who wants to grab some space in the center, and they play the move d5. Now taking this pawn with c takes d5, I think black will just recapture, and if we carry on taking with e takes d5, Stockfish doesn't have a take, they can play bishop b7 first, pinning this pawn against this bishop. After white castles, black can take on d5, takes on d5, bishop takes. And after let's say knight to f4 to hit this bishop twice, Stockfish can just take on g2 and after king takes, who's winning this position? Well, it's dead equal. However, alpha zero has ended up with an isolated center pawn on d4. And this is not ideal. It's going to be very hard to defend this pawn, especially in the end game. So if we go back to this position, it makes sense why alpha zero doesn't want to take this pawn off. So instead, they play e5, attacking the knight on f6, which Stockfish drops back to e8. Alpha Zero does take on d5, Stockfish recaptures, and Knight e2 is played. So this Knight defends d4, and also it seems as though Alpha Zero is clearing the lines for Rook to c1 at some point as well. With Stockfish's Knight on e8, they decide to go for g6, so they can maneuver the Knight into g7 perhaps. Alpha Zero castles kingside, Stockfish plays Knight to c6, maybe preparing to play knight to b4 or bishop to b4 and so alpha zero decided to play a3 to stop any infiltration from stockfish play continued with knight g7 alpha zero plays h4 again a typical alpha zero and leave the chess zero move gaining some space on the flanks king h8 by stockfish and it looks as though stockfish is prepared to play rook g8 here i think their idea is to play knight to f5 and rook to g8 and keep the king into some relative safety. Alpha zero continued rook e1, rook c8 and knight to f4, knight to f5 and now we've got two knights hitting out at d4. So now this knight to e2 move does make a lot of sense and white doesn't really lose a tempo. Now the probably the weakest piece for alpha zero at the moment is this bishop on g2 so they try to improve their position with bishop h3 where they're going to trade it off for this knight on f5, which is one of Stockfish's major pieces at the moment. But it's not without its consequences, because Stockfish plays rook g8. Alpha zero does capture this knight, but after g takes f5, suddenly this rook on g8 is opened up, and black's threatening to take this pawn on h4. 
If the king moves to h2 to get off the flank of the g file, then I think bishop takes e2, knight takes e2. Black can actually still take this pawn on h4. Because if g takes h4 here, there's queen takes, that, which is checkmate. So after bishop takes h4, maybe white can play b4 here. Just lock down the other side of the board, and after bishop e7, king g2. Okay, white's a pawn down, but they have ideas now of rook h1, and maybe attack on this side of the board with the open file. However, most of the engines are given this as an equal position for both sides, even though black is a pawn up. I guess white does have some decent counterplay. But back to the game, instead of moving the king away, alpha zero accepts the challenge and they play knight to h5, basically sacking the pawn. Stockfish takes his pawn on h4, again this pawn is pinned, but after knight e to f4, now they've got two knights infiltrating the king's side against black. At some point knight to f6 could become a major threat, especially if the bishop takes it and this pawn is free to take it, some squares will definitely open up. But Stockfish is in quite a sacking mood, they play rook to g4. King g2 from alpha 0, and they retreat the bishop back to e7, which makes a lot of sense. Now, having looked at this position with my own stockfish, stockfish 10, they recommended to go in rook h1 here for white, with a really good space advantage. And after queen f8, f3 looks really nice for white. The rook has to retreat back, let's say g5, and after bishop e3, protecting the d4 square, uh, black's not got a lot of options. If black takes this a3 pawn, then knight to f6 just wins for white because they're going to take on h7 next move and just infiltrate with all the pieces. Another move I looked at was knight to a5 here, but knight to f6 again is still a nice move. Even if the bishop takes it, the pawn can recapture. Let's say queen g8, threaten to take on g3. White calmly plays rook h3 in this position. Bishop b5, we can play a4. Bishop e8, and then just go queen d3. The idea is to double rooks. And the best move given here for black is actually e5, which shows black's desperation. White can even just take it. After knight c6, it looks as though white is in full command of this position now. For instance, they could take this pawn, double rooks. They've just got to watch out for the knight takes e5 idea. So back in the game, rook h1 was definitely possible, but alpha zero played it in a different move order. Played bishop e3 here, just protecting their d4 pawn. Safety first, it seems to be alpha zero's way. Knight to b8 from Stockfish, rerouting the knight around. Alpha zero grabs some space on the c file. Stockfish continues manoeuvring and then queen to d2 from alpha zero. So connecting the two rooks on the back rank. Stockfish retreats their own rook backwards, which probably makes some sense. So white doesn't have f3 with tempo in some variations. And now alpha zero plays a very bold move. They retreat their knight back to h3, opening up space for the bishop battery that they've just created, maybe preparing bishop h6 and bishop g7 ideas. I was wondering what would happen if Stockfish captured on c1 here. Rook takes c1, rook takes c1, and maybe play something like bishop to b5. But then it's up to alpha zero to lock down this side of the board with a4, bishop a6, and they play queen c3. And now they're dominating both sides of the board. They have the open file. If b5, it's just queen c7, takes on a4, and the queen can take on a7, hitting the bishop. And if it goes to b5, there's b takes a4, bishop c4, and white just emerges a pawn up with them past a pawn, which should be enough to win the game, especially after dominating this side of the board with the two knights as well. So after knight to h3 in the game, where alpha zero just created this nice battery, instead Stockfish played b5. So, okay, Stockfish needs to create some kind of counterplay on the queen side. I should just note, I don't think bishop takes here works because I think even white can just play rook a1 and they're going to win one of these pairs of bishops. Even after queen e7, I think they can just play queen a2. So Stockfish played b5 and alpha zero played bishop f4. I really like this move, it's very sneaky. So maybe white's preparing to play knight to f3 and if black takes this off, they've always got some lines bishop e5 where they can pin a piece against this king. So that is an incredibly sneaky move. It also does a defensive job of g3 and stops black pushing this f5 pawn as well. And Stockfish does come across as kind of desperate now. They play rook a8. I think they're trying to gain some counterplay with the a pawn perhaps. Alpha zero goes knight to g1. Stockfish plays rook g6. So stopping any knight to f6 ideas for the time being anyway. But now knight to f3 maybe preparing to play knight to h4 after rook h1. 
So Stockfish does hit out with B4 and Alcero just blocks it up with A4. I think they can take this pawn though. And even after Rook B8. And Alcero suddenly reveals how their position is really strong. They play Knight to F6. And if takes, takes. Bishop takes. They can play Knight to E5. Threatening the Rook on G6. If the Rook goes backwards, then they can play Knight C6. A fork against the Rook and Queen. And if Bishop takes E5, there's Bishop takes E5 check. Again, a fork against the King and the Rook. So I think Alpha Zero is in the driving seat, but they decided on A4. Stockfish move their king, and Alpha Zero just play Rook C2, strengthening their position. They're going to double Rooks on the C file now. Bishop C8, Queen C1. So now they've got a battery on the C file, and Stockfish is just going back and forth. Don't really have a plan. Maybe French play Bishop D3, but Alpha Zero counters this with Rook D1. The king goes backwards, so it looks as though Stockfish is just happy to wait and sit back and see what Alpha Zero can deliver here. Again, Rook H1 looked very strong for White. Preparing Knight to F6. If King G8, White can play Rook C7. Again, dominating on both sides. If Rook C8, maybe White can take this off. After Bishop takes, and play Queen C6. And now Alpha Zero's Queen in this variation is in a great position, just dominating all the squares for, of this Bishop. Let's say Stockfish goes King H8. Again, we can show Rook C1. If Rook G8 to protect the Bishop, Queen A8. Um, and after, let's say, A5 to protect the Pawn, I looked at Bishop H6 here, preparing Bishop G7 ideas. And White's still attacking this Bishop twice. So if the Rook moves off this 8th rank, they're in a lot of trouble. Let's say Rook E8. Knight G7. Knight B6, attacking the Queen, protecting the Bishop. But then just Queen takes A5. Rook g8 and knight to h5. And yeah, Alpha Zero is just winning this game now. They're a pawn up and their pieces are on absolutely fantastic positions. So instead of playing rook h1 in the game, Alpha Zero played rook c6, attacking the bishop on a6. Bishop e2 was played, rook d2 attacking the bishop. Stockfish captures on f3, the king recaptures, and the queen goes to e8. And now Alpha Zero just adds more wood into the fire. They triple lock the c file with the two rooks and the queen preparing rook c8 knight b6 is played to stop this but even so rook c7 and now they're just dominating the c file and stockfish is desperate they play knight to c4 um, this is a very weird move but i think the idea was that um, i think after rook to c7 there's not really much else stockfish can do even after let's say a5 the rooks are just coming in and they pretty much have to play a5 because otherwise a5 will be played by white. This shows how bad black's position is that Stockfish has to play knight c4 here. Alpha 0 just takes it. b3 is played. Rook b2. And bishop d8 attacking the rook. Which just retreats back to c5. Bishop b6. And alpha 0 can just play rook b5. And they're going to take this b3 pawn next move. d takes c4. Queen takes c4 and h6 was played. So alpha 0 is basically just a whole piece up. They're going to easily recapture this b3 pawn and they can even prepare a5 next move as well. But alpha 0 is all about the safety. King g2 just putting the king into some more safety. Rook c8 was played and queen d3. Rook d8 and d5 the final nail in the coffin which caused stockfish 8 to resign the game so why did they resign well they're a whole piece down for starters but if play continued takes on d5 rook takes d5 e takes d5 alpha zero can just take on b3 if queen c6 for some tricks uh, just rook c2 queen b7 again trying to get get some tricks here but then just queen b5 and the threats are a5, queen to e8 check, or just um, threatening this d5 pawn as well. And even after d4, king h2 is fine for white. And yeah, this is just devastatingly bad for black. So it makes sense that Stockfish resigned this game. So again, Alpha Zero made this look really easy. All we really did was triple lock that c file um, and just outmaneuvered Stockfish entirely. They locked down the king side with those two knights and the bishop on f4 and then just played to the C file and it was incredibly easy for Alpha Zero, it made it look really easy to beat Stockfish. But anyway, 
thank you for watching this analysis. If you haven't already, please do drop a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. And I'll be doing plenty more Alpha Zero games in the future, so see you next time. Goodbye for now.